All right, hey guys, we are live. I'm here today with Kara Albaleba. She is a best-selling author of one of my favorite books, Girl Code, and is now coming out with her, God, what is it, your seventh or eighth book? It's my fifth like full-length self-help book, but it's my seventh yeah. overall published book. So she's come out with this amazing new book. It comes out July 10th, is that right? Yes, Tuesday, and it's yeah, called- July 10th. We should make it a national holiday. It's called Like She Owns the Place, and it is all about self-confidence. It's about your inner magic. It's about so many amazing, wonderful things that I talk about, not only on here. I talked about it on my podcast and in my group, and I just wanted to talk to her today about all of those good things. We're going to talk style. We're going to talk so many things. But first thing first, Kara, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking the time to have me on, and thank you for everybody who's tuning in and hanging out with us. I told Kara before we started, we should get sponsored by Chanel, just based on our backgrounds alone. I'm manifesting a baby. (laughs) I know, right? So Kara, how, first of all, what was the inspiration behind Like She Owns the Place? So um, a lot of you who are tuning in may know me from a book called Girl Code that I wrote a couple of years ago, um, which became really successful. And, And the message behind Girl Code was just the fact that when women come together, we all win and we should focus more on collaboration versus competition. In Like She Owns the Place, I go a lot deeper than what I talked about in Girl Code because I believe that the first step to actually being able to support somebody else is to feel confident in yourself. So if we don't have that true sense of self and if we don't feel good about who we are, how can we show up for anybody else? So this is kind of like the next level of Girl Code. I think it's the book where you do the really deep inner work and focus on yourself and focus on digging into the things that make you super special and unique and so many other aspects of it. But that was really the, the main reason that I wrote it is just to kind of give people something that that went further than just the kind of like the top level stuff that I talked about in Girl Code. Yeah, and for me, Girl Code was such a revolutionary book because we were talking before we went live you know, I was fairly new to self-help world. I don't really like using that term, but I was an entrepreneur. I was a female. I was under the age of 30. I had no one around me that was doing the same thing until I get my hands on girl code and then join your amazing Facebook group. So now I have all these friends in real life and all over now. And the, it's amazing what, like what a difference having that network of female entrepreneurs around you supporting you will do. So like she owns the place is your first traditionally published book. So you self published Mm -hmm. all of your other ones. So walk us through a little bit. There are a lot of authors on here that follow me. I'm an author as well. So what are, what's the, what are the main differences in self publishing versus having a publishing company come in with your baby? Okay. So I first and foremost want to say that both ends of, of the experience have been great, but there is one thing that has remained true the entire time. And it's that you are the face of your brand as an author and you are responsible for your success as an author. So I had this dream years ago when I first decided to put a book out there. Can you hear me? experienced a little bit of being frozen. Oh, are we okay?
let's we're still good <laughs> we're back we're back i don't know Yay. what happened okay so much I'm like life sometimes you have to pause and and start fresh so <laughs> i like your segue so i missed all of that but i'm sure okay. it was I'm sure it was brilliant. <laughs> no, I stopped. I stopped myself. Okay, so okay. we'll back it up. So basically self-publishing versus traditional publishing. There is one common thread and that's you have to be your own advocate as an author. You are the face of your brand and ultimately all of your success as an author is in your hands. So when I first made my, my way into the publishing world, I knew that I wanted to have a traditionally published book. That was my ultimate dream. I wanted my whole Carrie Bradshaw moment. I wanted a big publisher and a big book launch party. And my first experience did not go that way. So I was rejected 19 times by 19 different publishers. I tell this story all the time. I told it in Girl Code. Yeah. And I got to a point where I had to make a decision. And I, I knew that I did not want to put my future um, in somebody else's hands in the terms of, you know, somebody saying, yes, you know, we give you permission now to, to publish a book. So I knew that self-publishing was going to be for me. It was going to be something that I decided to do. So I learned so much through that experience. I self-published oh, yeah. all four of my first books. As you know, Peyton, as a fellow self-published author, it's a lot of work, yep. but there's something so satisfying about it. Like knowing that you kind of like created this book baby and brought this piece of work into the world by yourself, it's a great feeling. Um, on the other hand, having a traditional publisher has been great because I do have an amazing editor who has been able to really, I think, help me make this my best book yet. She's pushed me creatively. Um, she's super talented. She really shines in the areas where I feel like I need help and, you know, pulling things out of me or just kind of like refining things or asking me questions that I wouldn't traditionally or typically ask myself. So that's been an amazing experience. Um, but at the end of the day, you still have to put yourself out there. Like this entire week, I'm doing like 20 interviews and like I scheduled every single one of them with you, yeah. with all my girls. And it's just been important to me to make sure that I'm touching the right audience and representing my book in the way that I want to represent it. So yeah, it, there's there's definitely good and bad to both. I'm glad that I was able to experience both sides of it, but I, I do love self-publishing. So if anyone's thinking of doing it, I like highly recommend it. It's funny because I'm starting to work on book two and I looked at my calendar and it wasn't that I couldn't find the time to write it. It's that I couldn't find the time to do all the other stuff that goes with it. I don't think a lot of people understand what goes with it. Yeah. So it's a lot, you guys. It is having a child in paper form. So yeah. Kara, you talk all about this book, about self-confidence. You talk about, um, you call it your inner magic, which I love. And you also have something else that I love, which is your glam vibration, which is basically like the, I like to shop at, you know, Bergdorf Goodman version of trying to get <laughs> high vibe, which I totally resonated with. So I feel like those are all tied in with each other. And I have little pieces that I reach for when I need to kind of raise that glam vibration. What do you do to get to that glam vibration in your life? So this is going to sound crazy, but something I actually just did before jumping on this call was spray myself with my favorite perfume. And I did that too. See? I'm yeah. telling you, it sounds so crazy to think that like a perfume can inspire you, but it does. I am such like a senses person, like visual, you know, visually, um, I have to put on certain music to kind of pump me up. I just had a playlist on with all my favorite like girl rockers and that like totally got me in the mood. I put on my perfume and little things like that, like lip gloss, you know, um, putting on a candle. I have like candles burning all around me right now. So it doesn't have to be like this crazy expensive thing that you do. You don't have to necessarily have a Chanel bag or be rocking right. like, you know, a $3,000 t-shirt. Like it's just about showing up in a way that makes you feel really on. And I'm all about feeling on. And I feel like th those little things that we can do can completely transform our day and our mood and ultimately the work that we put out there. It's really funny because when I got it's in the background. My first Chanel bag back there. Um, the purple it one. Made, the purple one. I remember. It made, <laughs> it made me show up for myself in a way that I never thought possible, which sounds so shallow. But mm -hmm. when I read about the your glam vibration, I was like, oh, this makes sense. Because now I can't have a dirty car because I have a Chanel bag. I'm a woman that has her shit together. <laughs> I don't do that. So I love that you talk about that in your book. So what few pieces do you put on when you're looking for like that extra oomph of confidence? What do you I, reach for? I love my kimonos. Anyone that has followed me online, just like the one you have on and I see them hanging in the background. I love my yeah. kimonos. I feel like 
I love dramatic outfits. Like, so you'll see me in either all black head to toe, even in the dead of summer in New York City, or in some like floating silk kind of kimono caftan, caftan number. Those are two things that I always turn to. Um, I love wearing shoes that are cute but comfortable. I right. have the most gorgeous shoes that I have worked so hard to be able to purchase, and they sit in those bookcases behind me because I can't wear them. Like they're just too uncomfortable. And again, living in yeah. New York city, you're walking around everywhere. So, I mean, even like something as simple as throwing on like a pair of Converse with a Chanel purse, like the yeah. high and low mixing those two, I feel like is so representative of who I am. Like I'll go to a dive bar with like, you know, a Chanel bag on, like, I don't care. I love that because yeah. that's who I am. There are moments where I just want to kind of feel edgy and kind of punk rock. And then there are moments where I want to feel really bougie. So those are some of my go-tos for sure. I'm definitely in the same boat as you. Totally understand that one. And I just kind of keep all of that stuff out. I'm like, oh, hello, children. I worked so hard for you. Yeah. And it's, you know what I want to really stress about all of this? When it comes to confidence, it's not about like emulating what somebody else is doing. It's not like no. me saying, oh, that girl's really confident and she wears the color red. So I'm going to go wear the color red. It's about no. like, cultivating your own sense of confidence and your own style and your own authenticity. Authenticity is like a big theme throughout this book. And I think that shows up in the way that we dress. I think that shows up in the way that we work with our clients in the books that we write. So it's really about figuring out what makes you shine. There was also a part, I don't want to give all the new juicy details in the book away, but there was a part in the book that I loved because you talk about um, the old Greek mythology with muses Mm -hmm. You talk about, you know, these guys that kind of waited for something to inspire them. And I always tell people you need to be your own damn muse. Yes. And you need to be the person that inspires you. You know, it, it's really romantic to sit around and think about like, oh, I inspired this book or this song or this poem or whatever. But for me, my big thing is about telling women that they need to be the ones that inspire themselves. And if you like, I mean, even your story, it's so amazing. It's one of my favorite stories because you're not one of those people that's like, my life used to suck. And now I make eight figures sitting on this beach. You actually like <laughs> talk about, you know what I'm talking about? Like you talk yes. about the journey, you talk about the struggle, you talk about your childhood, you talk about all the work that you put into stuff. So I just love that you are so open and honest about that because I feel like a lot of people aren't, they don't want to show the ugly side. They don't want to show um, any of that stuff. And I know that, I don't know if it was, it wasn't this book. I think it was girl code where you were working your corporate job and you weren't dressing in a way that resonated with you. And now you can kind of dress in whatever way you want. And I can definitely tell that helps people show up more. And also something I use in my online sessions and in real life is I tell people when they're having a hard time kind of stepping outside the box with their style is to figure out who their muse is. So it's not necessarily someone to take over, but in, you know, what would, would Madonna wear this? Well, I want to be more like her. So I'm going to kind of use her as my example because I'm a soccer mom in the burbs. I can't wear that. So I love right. that you talked about muses. I think that it's something that, well, anytime I use that word, people think that I've like lost my damn mind and I'm some long haired hippie, which is not wrong. But no, I love that. I love that you brought that up because that was kind of like in the last chapter, I talk a lot about that and I talk about magic and showing up and spirituality and, and not in a religious weird sense, but in like a right. sense of something bigger than us. You know, I, I do believe there's something bigger than us that inspires us. And the concept of a muse to me is not so much about like, like looking outside of ourselves. Like I said earlier, like the woman who wears red or that speaks up or that's really assertive. It's there's somebody inside of all of us. And I think that woman, there are different aspects of her from different seasons of our life that come up, but there's somebody in us that's like exactly who we want to be. And it's all the other bullshit that gets in the way of us really being able to be her. So it's like the fear of, you know, other people judging us for dyeing our hair pink, which I will probably wind up doing again tomorrow when I go to get my hair done. I was, I was about to say, like, you're kind of overdue for a pink moment. I know. I feel like I'm missing it. But, like, the problem is my hair is going to fall out eventually because I'm just constantly going back and forth between a million different colors. So I have to just be really careful. <laughs> but it might be, like, light pink tomorrow. You're um, going to have a wig tomorrow. Don't get – don't – you're going to have, like, a full – on it's like green like ass length wig you're um, gonna be like you're gonna have a, just a giant like wall of wig heads now I feel like that's what you're gonna end up being like in 20 or 30 years you're just gonna be like that woman that wears caftans and wigs and those, I like, totally would not in the summer though because it's so hot no, out right god now. no but like god, for the no. winter with my fur for sure fake fur yes um, oh yeah <laughs> I can see it now. Made by Kara. New wigs. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> I'm always branding, baby. Always branding. Always. I know. So the book comes out next Tuesday. What is the one thing that you want women to be able to take away from this book? You know, I want women to feel less alone when they read it. I think one of my goals for for everything that I do, but specifically for this book, is to help women feel like they are okay exactly as they are. And I did try to drive that message home a lot in Girl Code, and I think that I did, but this is like, you know, I, I feel like I did it a hundred times more in this book. I feel like I just want women to know that you can want to change and you can want to improve your life and it's okay to want to evolve, but make sure that you're evolving number one for the right reasons, because you actually want to change and grow and do these things for yourself. And number two, change has to begin with love. And I think so many of us change because we hate ourselves or we don't even oh yeah, as extreme as hating, but we just don't like ourselves or we're angry with ourselves. But if you can learn to evolve from a place of self love, that really changes the game. So if, if anybody takes anything away from that, I, I hope that that's it. I also want women to know that you are enough ex exactly as you are. You are authentic and unique and beautiful, and you have an important story to tell in this world and amazing things to share. And if we can just get out of that space of being so afraid to just shine the way that we are, I, I just think this world would be such a more, such much more interesting place to live and people would be a lot happier. It really would be. I think that if people can get away from the judgment of other people, because you know this, I know this, I have a ton of female entrepreneur friends that are on here. And so do you people ask me all the time. So what do you do again? What is your job? When are you going to get a real one? Mm -hmm. And uh, family members have called my job playing dress up. And I have to kind of tell them I'm more like a fashion therapist. I'm more like, a, <laughs> let me figure out what you're doing with your life by what's going on in your body. But it is really hard to block that out, especially if you don't have a network of support. You don't have someone telling you, hey, you know what? You're fine just as you are. Like you're fine. You don't have to lose 20 pounds to be worthy. You don't have to be 20 years younger to start. Like it's, I resonated so much with that message because growing up, I was always taught you're not thin enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. You're not talented enough. And to have someone even in a book to go, you're fine. You got this. It was really comforting. And I actually, I posted this really cool story the other day. Um, I was scheduling this with you and I got fired from my last day job, January, 2017. And I was still styling and doing all the stuff in between. And I would read girl code on my lunch breaks. And I was reading it, trying to figure out how to make the leap to my full time, making this my full time gig. And I got fired for being too ambitious because they That's saw, crazy. I know I like wear it like a badge of honor now. They, they saw me trying to like fit all my styling clients in and to make content and to like, I was DJing at a club. They were trying to get this all, trying to get it all sorted. And then I thought, okay, I'll show you. And I wrote the book and it came out like five months later and I've never been doing, like I've never been doing this well in my business since then. But I had to deliver a custom suit that I had made for a client. And I drove by the old day job, saw my old manager outside like smoking a cigarette and like Kara, her message comes through it. I'm like, okay, this is one of those full circle, like Oprah moments where everything is great, which we're going to, you know, Kara is going to get on Oprah and I'm going to style her for that. That's <laughs> something that we've been talking about forever. But I just, I, I try to be as open and honest with people about my journey as much as possible. And you are definitely the inspiration behind that because I feel like so many people, and you talk about this too. You talk about this in the new book where you talk about people are trying to hide themselves or to convince other people that there's something else, be it with um, plastic surgery or with um, it cultivating their Instagram. So it looks like you have this perfect life. Can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah. You know, I think that, I think we're really disillusioned um, as women, especially women in business to portray this image, right? We think that we're going to be, you know, accepted more, or we're going to make more friends, or we're going to get more clients or get more followers or whatever it is that we're going for by putting forth this perfect image and this flawless image of who we are. And in reality, it's like the complete opposite. Anytime that I've asked my audience, hey, do you guys prefer like more of a curated, like beautifully, you know, color coordinated Instagram? Or do you want pretty images that are real, like taken on the spot, right. like selfies or, you know, and everybody's like, I want something real. And I feel the exact same way. Like I love to follow girls who talk about what went wrong and how they got through it. And I think there's a fine line. People are afraid sometimes to be too vulnerable because they don't want to look like they're a hot mess or they're like, you know, sharing everything in their lives and airing out their dirty laundry. But I think that there's a way to do it that's constructive. And I think that we can talk about the breakdowns 
once we get to the other side and we have the breakthrough, right. because we know the breakthrough is always going to follow the breakdown. If we are looking at our world with a perspective of everything's happening to me, as opposed to happening, sorry, as everything's happening for me, as opposed for to me. happening to me, you know, and I think when we think, oh my gosh, this is happening to me, everything's falling apart. That's like that victim mode that we can easily get into. And many of us fall into that trap. I do it sometimes too. And I have to snap myself out of it. They don't serve champagne at pity parties. Um, <laughs> so he's my theme or sparkling water. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's just really about realizing that we do connect not only with each other, but with ourselves in a much more authentic way when we can be vulnerable, we can share the real stuff. Yeah. And it's really interesting because, you know, Kara also worked in the music business and I work in the music business. So we kind of have very similar views on women in the industry who are trying to convince us that we're they're younger than we are. I mean, I just talked to you about a shoot that I did where a woman kept lying about her age. And to, so for me, when I was fully able to own the fact that I was an eating disorder survivor, that I did deal with body dysmorphia, that's when I had not only more, more followers, but I had more people that resonated with me. And I always say that pain is useless if you don't use it to help other people. So mm -hmm. if you have a struggle, if you have something where you you are working a really like soul draining corporate job and you don't like it, share that with other people and then they'll be able to get something out of it. Cause if not, then what the hell did you go through all that for? Yes. And, and Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, I also really believe in kind of like, I look at everything with a teaching lens. So everything that I go through in my life, I'm like, how can I share this with other people in a constructive way that makes them heal or helps them feel better or feel less alone? So if you look at your life that way, there's, I mean, people are like, well, where am I, you know, how am I going to help somebody? How can I inspire someone? easy. Just look at everything you've gone through and think about what you learned. What was the lesson that you gained from that? And then share that back. And then it makes it feel like it wasn't in vain or what didn't happen randomly to you. There's always something that we can take from every single challenge. Yeah. And the thing too about, um, you know, I, I have a lot of women on here and I have a lot of women in my other group and they, you know, they might've gotten some plastic surgery. They might've gotten some tweaks here or there. And in the industry that I'm in, it's so prevalent. You were talking about Botox parties and I was so happy that I wasn't the only one that cringed at the fact that like people are having parties where they, they, there's botulism involved. I mean, come on, let's get real here. I know. And, and it's, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was going to go ahead. <laughs> the way well, I feel about that, it's like, I don't, I would never, I don't judge anyone who does anything. Right everyone's coming from whatever they're doing from a place of, of need, right? Everybody feels like that's the best move for them. But I just wish that more women would understand that it's the work we do inside that counts. And there is so much we can do inside to bring on that feeling of confidence or whatever it is that we're searching for in a needle full of Botox or in a boob job or in all these things that we think are going to bring us joy and self-worth and self-esteem there's a better way to get there. And I think that's like the message I really tried to bring forward in like the beauty chapter, for example, when I talked about beauty as being an energy, because I really believe that it is. Well, it's so true. And I, it's just so common. Like you go get your teeth cleaned and you go get your lips done now. Like yeah. it's, it's so common. And I, I did a podcast almost a while ago about women now are treating their body parts, like their trends, like, oh, boyfriend jeans are trendy now. Okay. Oh, having a, a, like a Kardashian butts in right now. And we're going through all these extremes to get the trendy body yeah. and it's not really serving us at all. And I also had this realization, you talked about this too. When I was able to start buying things for myself that I thought I really wanted, I wasn't doing the inner work. I wasn't doing the work to, um, the Chanel bags were like a band aid. Yeah to something better. Like I wanted to feel confident and I wanted to feel powerful and how, yeah, it's a, it's beautiful. And I love it more than most people probably love their children, but <laughs> it didn't make me feel any, like any more confident. So I think that by making it about what we're going through on the inside, while also embracing the stuff we like on the outside, that was just a really amazing part of the book. And I can't wait for everybody to read that part and to stop inviting me to your Botox parties. Cause I got bangs. <laughs> I'm good. I'm just going to hide everything under here. So Kara, what is one thing that you want people to take away from your message in general? Like, what do you want people to think of when they think of you? That's a really good question. I want them, to, I, I want them to, to know that they're enough. Like I, I, like I said before, and like, if you are just willing to get to know yourself and embrace yourself and truly love yourself, 
it solves so many problems. <laughs> like it really honestly does. And it's not easy. It's not like a switch that we can flip on to be more confident and to, to own every single part of ourselves. But if you're willing to just, you know, do the work to get there, to listen to conversations like this, to start conversations like this among your girlfriends and, and really set an example. I mean, life it just, it gets so much better when you can just be you. Yeah. My girlfriends definitely know that when you're within a 500 feet radius of me, we're not going to talk shit about my body, your body, her body, their body, his body, anybody's body. And that's what my clients know too. And I love that you, there's a chapter in the book or a section of the book where you talk about redirecting conversation. And I think mm -hmm. that's the most amazing thing ever. And I've started doing it and I've started, you know, I've started trying to go, you know what? Like, I don't really want to gossip about so-and-so like, let's talk about something else because it's a small town. Everybody talks. We yeah. all know that. And I just, I love that your whole, like you walk your, you talk your walk and you walk your talk. I just really appreciate that about you. It's hard Thank to find you. people like that. Thank you. Yeah. I just, I always feel like there's a better use of our time than gossip. That's a big thing for me. I'd rather talk about people. I'd rather be with people who want to talk about their dreams and their goals than other people. I just, it's just, you know, everything that I kind of look at in my life, including conversations and relationships, I'm like, is this productive or is this destructive? And if it's right. destructive, it's draining my energy. It's taking away from all the amazing things we could be discussing and creating with each other. And yeah, it happens from time to time, but I actually give a lot of suggestions and language even in the book on how to redirect those conversations so it doesn't feel so awkward or so confrontational when you tell someone, hey, I'm not doing this today. You know, yeah. and I think it starts to come more naturally when you're happy and when you're living your life and you're enjoying yourself, you just don't have time to participate in it anymore. I just want everybody to get all of them tattooed. Well, not I don't have any <laughs> tattoos. That probably wouldn't be the first one I get. I have a few. <laughs> yeah, I'll just... I'll just get like things to say instead of gossiping with other people. Uh, it's about, that's how we bond with each other over here. It's very bless your heart. Well, Kara, thank you so much for joining us. Tell everybody where we can find the book. Where can we follow you? I think I'm pretty sure everybody in the group knows where they can find you, but tell everybody where we can get the books. I've already pre-ordered mine and I'm really thank excited you. for those. Thank I'm you excited so much. For those. <laughs> um, so you can get the book at likesheownstheplace.com. It will be out Tuesday, July 10th. You can pre-order right now the hardcover, which I'm so proud of, my little hardcover baby. She's so cute. You um, look so good on that cover too. Can thank we just you. talk about that? Like you. Uh, there's a whole this is a whole other conversation about what it took to get me in the mental state to be able to actually be on my own book cover because that was not easy. Um, Did they make I, you open the doors like a lot of times? Because I know that whenever we're doing an album yeah. cover or photo shoot, we have to do the same action like over and over again. So I want to see a video of like the behind the scenes. I of, have like, one. Do you know what's so hey. crazy? So this was the last shoot of the day. We were shooting from 10 o'clock in the morning until um, four o'clock in the afternoon. And we did yeah. all these different setups, all these different outfits, makeup. And then finally the photographer is like, let's just get one by the door just to have it. So we yeah. ran, they were sweeping the place up and closing it down. And we ran yeah. to the door and I just like popped through. And like, that was the shot that made the cover. Hey. That was really crazy. Yeah. Um, I just love that so much. Cause I just, the thing is from someone that like works on photo shoots, when I see a photo like that, I'm going, I'm laughing. I'm going, how many times yes. did it take the to behind get the that scenes. shot? Totally. Totally. Okay. Um, so yeah, so like she owns the place.com is where you can get it. Um, the audiobook, the ebook, the hardcover. And if you are in the U S and you want to order pre-order it now, if you go to like she owns the place.com, I have a link on there where you can enter your order information and you get this really cute sticker pack and quote cards from the book and just some little gifts for ordering the book early. I'm going to stick that upgrade sticker on everything. <laughs> I got a nameplate. Did you see the gold nameplate? Your I had Carrie there? Bradshaw nameplate. My Carrie Bradshaw. Yeah. <laughs> upgrade was my word of 2018. And I think I'm, I think I'm upgrading quite a bit. So I following I suits. So. <laughs> I would definitely say so. I was like, of course, Kara got a damn Carrie Bradshaw necklace. And it's a real gold. It. It's real gold. Oh yeah. So she got, <laughs> where did she get hers? At like a flea market? I think she said, cause I'm a I crazy person and like all this stuff. <laughs> It's so funny, too, because when you're like, oh, I wanted the book party, I'm like, I know what Carrie Bradshaw's wearing at that book party. <laughs> and I'm like, she was dating Berger at the time. Yeah, that's what I Dallas. He couldn't handle her success. Oh, Berger was the worst. The worst. He was, hated him so much. But I like that's all I dated with yeah. Burgers. Same. And I love that you are not afraid to talk about that either. But that's a whole other conversation <laughs> for another time. Kara, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you, Peyton. This was awesome. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and listening and hanging out with us. Bye, guys. Bye. Um.